Cosimo, congratulations on Spiral Farm. Hello, hi, thank you. Yeah, so um, for my fans at home, a bit about your role in this film. Uh, my role is uh, the one of Moo, which is a short nickname uh, for Maurizio. That tells you I'm not American, but Italian. That, that was, I believe, some kind of homage to the, uh, uh, to the nationality of our director, who is, uh, who is partially uh, Italian, you know. Uh, it was a lovely film, a lovely little role, but I, f I thought was pivotal, pivotal for, the, for the story, if you can say that. Uh, because I, I, I kind of uh, play an element of, of a kind of foreign element it, into this community of people, um, but in a way that finds his, uh, his moment to question his, his, his life also. And, um, and, and it's a recall to integrity, it's a recall to 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 feelings and and relationships, which is mainly you know the major part that the movie uh, is uh, is based on. Um, so I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I had my partner Amanda. You know, we had a lot of fun. Uh, it was a crazy shoot, you know, with little uh, tools, uh, a lot of uh, heart. You know how those movies are. Um, so I was happy to do it. What, what were your preconceived thoughts about communes coming into the project? And what were your thoughts after having done the project? Because for all the criticism that people have about communes, I envy their free spirit and, you know, do things that you love. And well, what are your thoughts about communes? Well, if you ask my friends, they, they say I'm very much new age because okay. I, uh, well, communes are, could, be, could be a good thing. It depends on what communes are based on. Um, uh, usually, if it's a moment of uh, celebration of some good, uh, you know, topic, good uh, concept, uh, I I don't I welcome uh, the concept come come you know common. Uh, uh, you know, we say commune. Ah, it's in, right. in, it's like uh, living in. Uh, you know, in in the awareness of other people, uh, other people' feelings, other people' needs, uh, it's something we should probably experience. Uh, you know, in a lifetime, but even once in a while. You know, to be more aware of the other and and find the other as a in a in a close relationship, like a physical human relationship in this world of. Uh, media uh, you know social media which is uh, so social but so much uh, putting us in a, in an isolating uh, you know uh, mode i like know, that ourselves you know i like that i haven't seen it that way before that's cool <laughs> well thank you so much sir michael congratulations on spiral farm thank you so much we're super excited to be premiering in la finally yep and uh i had the fortune of screening it last night fantastic oh, really? film, yeah right on yeah so what is it about this project that made you want to be involved with it? When I read the script and I talked to Alec for the first time, it became very clear from reading it and also, I mean, he just said it, but the dialogue didn't matter. He was already in such a confident position in his ability to find good actors who he can believe in that he's like, look, I want to improv all this stuff on set because I think they're probably better writers than I am. Like, they can find what's true better than I can. So he basically made guidelines. And as soon as any director comes, comes to me with that kind of thing, I'm like, well, this is a huge signal that this could be really good. Because, you know, it's yet another step towards maximizing its total possible quality. And uh, was it tough finding the location for the commune? Uh, we definitely checked out some places uh, to be the commune. Um, what we ended up figuring out was that we could, between these two locations, we could actually do all of our interiors somewhere different from our exteriors. Oh. So that allowed us to just focus on one place that worked great as exteriors. And then once we found that, locked that in, negotiated down the lowest price possible because this is quite a small film. And then we did that for a full week, just shot that place out, and then we moved interior for a whole other week. Wow. And uh, hopefully, now that you've seen it, and if anyone can see it, hopefully they can notice that uh, it's pretty seamless. Like, no one has any idea that we shot everything separate. 
But doctors are great. Al Alec kept them in the space, and it works. This might be a question for Alec, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, there's a lot of coming of age stories out there. What makes this one stand out from the rest? Coming of age. I think what makes this coming of age story stand out from the rest is its quietness. Mm. It's not trying to hit you over the head with big themes or using like kind of, I don't know, overt and cliche tactics. It's very much in her head and you get to watch what's going on. And she, there's a lot going on where she doesn't say anything and it's just facial expressions, which in themselves allow them to be interpreted in different ways. So what's great is that our film is a little bit of a chameleon because we're getting a lot of different perspectives from different people. They see and read different things. So rather than something that needs to be like very commercially marketable and it has to be very clear that people are going to know what they're getting when they buy a ticket, we didn't have to worry about that because we knew we were going to make any money anyways. It's micro-budget filmmaking in, in 2019. Um, so we just went for the most artistic thing possible and the most interpretable thing possible. So it actually is standing out compared to other coming of age stories because people are getting lots of different things from it which we're actually very happy about. Last question before I let you go. Uh, what's your advice to aspiring filmmakers and producers out there in the independent cinema, you know, not studio back, uh, struggle with the budget? What's your advice to them? My advice to anyone in the micro budget space yeah. is before you get here, maybe don't go to school. Mm. Like do not saddle yourself with debt. I have a lot of friends who went to film school and they've got a lot of things out of it that I would say is worth the debt but they have the debt. And for me personally, I just didn't think it was a worthy trade-off, so I didn't take on that debt. And so when a director calls me up, like, you know, hey, I need to shoot this right away, and, you know, I've got this, I don't have this, you know, do we want to work together? I'm flexible, and I can just say, you know what, actually, I'm gonna do this commercial, but I'll just cancel that, and we'll do this movie together. And then at the other side of it, like, I'll be okay. And I know this whole time, like, I wasn't, like, sweating, trying to make sure that, like, I was paying this, like, $600 bill every month or something. So I think it's possible to not go to film school and still be able to make movies. And it'd be great to not have to be solid with debt when you're trying to do these types of projects. That's a good advice. Thank you so much for your time. Alec, congratulations on Spiral Farm. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, what's the inspiration behind this story? Uh, I was very inspired by communes and uh, some intentional communities that I had uh, visited. Uh, and that was sort of uh, the idea was to uh, tell a coming of age story within the context of an intentional community. Now, I had the fortune of screening it last night. Loved it. Wonderful oh, thank film. Thank you. Um, now, I'm going to ask... Um, does this movie say anything about commune in criticism and maybe maybe constructive way or anything like that? No? Um, I didn't really see the film as sort of a, a criticism of it. I just wanted to try and accurately represent what okay. life was going to be like on it. Um, and then I think audiences can decide for themselves if they think it's a utopia or a prison or somewhere in between. Um, well, what are your personal thoughts about it, about communes in general? I mean, they're they're really mixed. Um, I think I think it obviously depends on the commune, but uh, there's definitely a part of me that's very attracted to that type of living. I, um, I I think it's very brave to venture so far off the grid and so far from societal norms. And I think the people who do that are are usually very colorful, vivid, uh, interesting individuals. Um, but I do think that there is, you know. Uh, the challenge is, you know, how does one find their own individuality um, within uh, such sort of a confining sort of groupthink mentality? I, th I think there's that dichotomy that exists that can be a little bit complicated. The story is so brave. Like, you get the characters exploring their sexuality, their curiosity for the first time things, you know. So talk a bit about approaching that and creating that safe uh, environment for your actors to be free to to perform that yeah um i've known the the lead actress piper since she was uh 16 and we have been collaborating on on, on film together for many years so um that trust was definitely there and um i think you know the actors that came into this project were all really open to that. Um, and it's not something that I ever really forced on them. I think there would have been a way to do this same story with sort of less emphasis on that. Um, but I think that the actors themselves were wanting to sort of bravely explore dangerous places. And I think to get to be their first audience and their guide is a huge honor. Um, and I was, you know, shocked at just how brave they were and, 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 and how they embraced that aspect of the story. 
What's on your horizon? What's coming up next for you as a filmmaker? Uh, I'm uh, writing a couple of scripts, and um, uh, our, our producer, Hoop, and I really want to do a horror movie next. Um, I have a web pilot that I shot with a friend. Um, so hopefully, uh, yeah, lots of little projects, and hopefully one will, one will happen. So what's your advice for aspiring filmmakers out there in the independent cinema? You know, lack of budget, struggling. What's your advice to them? Uh, I think to remember that sometimes your limitations are actually your greatest gifts. Is that so? Um, and that to remember that, you know, uh, really use what you have um, and not to get too scared by the limitations. That even if you have very little, that can often be a very inspiring, creative way to get your story told. Um, but again, I, I feel like I'm barely an authority to be telling anyone what to do. Um, but, um, you know, I, I can only say that I, I tried to tell a uh, story that was really from my heart and something that I really felt like I needed to tell. And I think if you have a story and you have a passion that's like that, it's very important to nurture it and to uh, feed that. I love that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Yeah.